Well, attending a race meeting will get easier from Monday because restrictions will relax ahead of October the 22nd. That's when the race courses hopefully will be fully open again. It's Champions Weekend next Saturday and Sunday. The biggest weekend of the flat season in Ireland, Leopardstown staging the Saturday fixture, the Curra hosting the Sunday fixture. Both race courses will have a capacity of 4,000 people per day. The mixture of outdoor and indoor, anybody wishing to have an indoor hospitality situation will have to have proof of vaccination. And joining us to look ahead to Champions Weekend is the Melbourne Cup winning trainer and former Epsom Derby winning jockey, Joseph O'Brien. Joseph, how are you getting on? Very good, thanks, John. How are you? You're not too bad, Joseph. Uh, I think you might be on the gallops there. Um, for anybody who's yeah. watching, it's been a long 18 months, Joseph, without race goers or race courses. I'm sure you're delighted to see the fans coming back now. Absolutely, John. And, um, um, you know, hopefully over the next few months, we'll get more and more people back at the races. I suppose it's a good start uh, at for Champions Weekend, we're going to have a few thousand people back at the races. Um, you know, even in recent times, there's been, I think, 500 at some of the meetings recently, and it's definitely uh, um, brought a bit of atmosphere. So looking forward to more people getting back, and hopefully in the not-too-distant future, we'll get back to full capacity at the big meetings. How have you found the challenges, Joseph, of training during COVID? Yeah, well, to be honest, John, the, the, insofar as the horses, you know, not much has changed other than the protocols that we've had to put in around the yard and and with the with the staff and the, the people. We've had obviously a lot less visitors, um, but insofar as training the horses, our system has 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 pretty much remained pretty solid. And I've been very lucky that I've been able to get up and go out every day and have something to do pretty much all the way through lockdown. So in in the racing industry, we've been quite lucky in that regard. Your dad's training, your brother, Dunica's training. Uh, is there a friendly rivalry between yourself, Aidan, and Dunica at the moment? Yeah, absolutely. There is. Um, there's always a rivalry. Um, um, but, we, but we're always happy to, to win. And when we lose, we lose. And I'm happy for Dunica to win and my dad wins. And, and uh, we, we, we go to the track with the best horses we can, prepared as good as we can. And the best horses will win on the track then. And that's about it, John. And in this game... You know, you're you're losing an awful lot more than you're winning. So, to, to survive a length of time in this game, you have to be able to take a loss on the chin and move on. Is there much slagging? Is there much uh, banter at the breakfast table about uh, your successes and uh, your your disappointments with Aiden and with Dunica? Yeah, well, we we um we don't get to see each other as much as maybe we used to. Um um, as you know, the, the, we don't don't live uh, very close together. But when we when we are together, there is always a, a bit of slagging, and um um yeah, absolutely. There's there's no doubt about that. And generally, generally, it's the people who, whoever's had the worst day gets the brunt of it. That's very good. Uh, when it comes to learning from your dad, Aiden, I mean, he's been an incredible. Uh, ambassador for this country and, and the global racing brand that is Bally Doyle. What did you, what have you learned from him uh, both as a father and, and as a trainer, Joseph? I suppose, um, uh, John, you know, as much as anything, um, um, just to do your best is, is always what Dad always told, has told us and really drilled into us growing up um, uh, to prepare as well as you can for something, whatever that is. Uh, have all your I's dotted and your T's crossed. And then whatever the result is, is the result and take it on the chin and move on. And, you know, when you don't win, you have to learn from, from the experience and from whatever little mistakes or, or big mistakes might have been made and and not to dwell on things too much. So that's probably the one thing that, you know, that always drilled into us is to do your best um, prepare as well as you can and then take the result on the chin. How have you found the transition, Joseph, from riding an Epsom Derby winner and watching your weight and all these kind of things and being champion jockey to training horses? Um, you know, really, John, it's 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 um, always something that I was going to do and it's always something that was in the back of my mind. So uh, I suppose it was something I, I always looked forward to when I was riding, was looking forward to training. So really the transition was was, 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 wasn't, uh, was, quite, it was quite easy for me. And like I say, it was a challenge that I was really looking forward to. You got over 50 horses entered for Champions Weekend at Leverstown and the Curra next weekend, Joseph. Do you have specific targets in mind with each horse? How do you train them at this time? Like, is it just a case of keeping their work ticking over or do certain horses have specific plans? How are you preparing for this big weekend? Yeah, well, I suppose a weekend like Champions Weekend, John, we'd always make plenty of entries because really uh, owners um, and, you know, myself, we want to be well represented at those big meetings and 
Champions Weekend is, you know, probably the biggest weekend of racing in the in the flat program in Ireland. So, so we make plenty of entries, make make sure we have plenty of options, and then as the week gets closer, as the weekend gets closer, we'll we'll find down what we're going to run and we'll run what we think has the best chances of winning the races that they're in, and basically take it from there. When I think of the Champion Stakes, uh, Joseph, I think of Fantastic Light in Galileo, one of the best races I've ever seen. Galileo was the Derby winner, Fantastic Light, an older horse. They were head-to-head at Leperstown. I think you were eight years of age. Do you remember much about it? Yeah, it's fantastic, uh, uh, Jewel, um, um, John, wasn't it? And the horse slipping up the inside there and the two of them going going head-to-head all the way to the line. I mean, the Champion Stakes is, you know, among, among the if not the best race in, in, in the flat on the turf in the world every year. It's certainly one of them. And this year is not going to have a huge field, but it's going to be incredibly competitive with, you know, probably some of the best horses, probably two or three of the best horses in Europe are going to line up. So it's it's going to be a fantastic race. And, and really all the weekend, I'm looking forward to all the racing. When we look at the big race then next Saturday, Joseph, we've got Aidan's unbeaten three-year-old St. Mark's Basilica. Uh, the Dermot well-trained Tarnawa, winner of the Breeders' Cup Turf last year, and we've got Jim Bulger's New Market 2000 Guineas winner, Pro- Poetic Flair. How do you assess the, the market leaders in this one? Sure, sure, John, I suppose it's like any of them top races. Um, uh, you know, Tarnawa is one of the best fillies in training. Um, um, Poetic Flair's are arguably the best. Poetic Flair and St. Mark Basilica are the two best three-year-olds in training. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Um, um, uh, Poetic Flair, top miler. And, and St. Mark Basilica, obviously, he's a group one winner at a mile and 10 furlongs this year. So, I mean, even if only the three of them turn up, it would be a fantastic race. And uh, um, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing who comes out on top. Obviously, I'm a little bit biased and to say that I hope it's St. Mark Basilica, but it's going to be a fantastic race. We have Patrick Sarsfield and Thundery Knights entered at the moment in this race from your stable, Joseph. Will they run? And if they do, do they have an each-way chance? Yeah, there's a possibility that one of them will run and they would have an each-way chance. Uh, Thundering Knights is a Group 1 winner this year and uh, Patrick Sarsfield had a hold-up after his first run this season. Uh, he ran, or his second run this season, he ran really well at Ascot and just got beaten. He was due to go to America for a grade one after that, but had a hold up. So there's a chance he could run uh, as well. Um, but two very good horses. But at the end of the day, they're probably both will be running for place money. OK, it's so a mile and two, Joseph, the champion stakes. Do you need a miler or do you need a stayer? What do you need? You, you need to stay for the mile and a quarter track in, in, in Leopardstown, especially for the for this for this meeting. The champion stakes is always run on the outside track in Leopardstown. And a lot of the flat meetings in Leopardstown are run much further in. So this track in particular is a much more of a stamina test than what you would maybe normally associate with um, uh, uh, Leopardstown. Often often it can it can pay the front run or right handy, but this track in particular, you need a bit of stamina. That's interesting, absolutely. And then the next day at the Curra, uh, you have uh, the St. Ledger, Twilight Payment runs for you in that one. You've won this race before with Order of St. George, so how do you win the St. Ledger? What do you need to do tactically in terms of the pace of the race as a jockey, for example? You need stamina, John. That's what the St. Ledger is all about. Uh, Twilight Payment has that in spades. Very tough horse. Um, I suppose for him to be seen at his best, he needs top of the ground. Um, uh, so that's one thing that we'll be hoping for him. Hopefully the weather stays good. But he's an incredible horse and has been a fantastic servant for us over the last last few years. And to be you know well into his eighth year and performing at the top of his game is is is, is incredible because he hasn't missed a dance his whole life and uh, and uh, uh, really ran a fantastic race last time over the course and distance to win. Never missed the dances, absolutely. When you're a jockey in a race like that, how do you judge the fractions? How do you know when to go or when to hold on or, or, or when to make your move? Because it's a different distance to say a mile or a mile and a half. Yeah, well, I suppose the first thing you need to do is have your homework well done before you go out. The Curra in particular is is a, is 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 a, is a tricky enough track to ride despite despite what 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 a lot of people think. And so far as you're turning for a, a long way, and and it doesn't. Oh, always, it's not always as obvious on the on when you're watching it. So you don't want to get cu- caught too wide, especially over a mile and six. And then really, you just have to feel your way. If the pace is strong, you can sit a bit longer. And if the pace is slow, when they start moving down the hill, once you cross the top across the top there to Curra, and they start running down the hill around past the five, you have to have an eye on what's happening because if if they haven't gone fast up to there, it's very hard to catch them. Um, so so you really have to play it by ear um, and try not to get stuck too wide.
I'm looking at uh, other horses you've entered uh, in the Matron Stakes on the Saturday, pretty gorgeous. And then on the Sunday, the Moyglare Studs Stakes, Agartha. Any of these horses, will they run? Do they have chances if they do? Yeah, hopefully Agartha has a big chance. Um, uh, she, she'll probably go there as the favourite or second favourite. She won the Group 2 there the last time um, uh, over the course and distance uh, on slow ground, but she has form on better ground as well. And uh, Pretty Gorgeous has been a little bit disappointing this year. There's no two ways about it. But she'll run in the Matron all being well. And if she gets a good draw, which she's been a bit unlucky this year with a couple of bad draws and things going against her, if she got a good draw, we'd be hoping she could sneak into the money. Twilight Payment, uh, so you're hoping if he gets top of the ground, he'll have a chance of uh, improving on his third last year in the St. Ledger. And he's going to the Melbourne Cup again. Do you have to pinch yourself sometimes, Joseph, that you've won the Melbourne Cup twice as a trainer? Yeah, it's incredible, uh, uh, John, really. And I suppose I'm very lucky to have the support of Lloyd Williams, who obviously owns Twilight Payment, uh, Twilight Payment as well as some other horses in the yard here. Um, um, you know, he's a big supporter of me and, and he knows what it takes to win the Melbourne Cup and uh, we've been very lucky to do it twice. It's a fantastic race. It, you know what they call it, the race that stops the nation and it really, really does uh, uh, um, take over Australia for the for, for that week and um, um, it's been an incredible experience to, to be able to take part in it and uh, uh, we've been very lucky to, to, to uh, win it. And you're going again because maybe it's European success, maybe it's COVID issues, maybe it's equine debts, but it seems like the criteria for international horses to go to the Melbourne Cup are much more stringent now, and that's dissuading some European trainers. Yeah, to, to be honest, John, it's been actually really difficult. Um, it's been tough, tough on, you know, I, Mark Hackett in my office who manages all the uh, all, all the racing and the paperwork and the work that he's had to do to to in even just involved in getting the horses from here to Australia is you know in these times is much more of a nightmare than what it might be previously. Obviously, a very expensive trip, and on top of that, you have to do a number of uh, sa- scans um, um, uh, on the horses. Some of them involved, you know, three or four days in the equine hospital, um, 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 in the run up to a big race, which is which is quite difficult to take a horse out of its routine and environment for a few days in the in the run up to a big race. But it is what it is. They've set the hoops that we have to jump through if we want to go back down there. Um, so that's what it is. We just deal with it and and, and try to try to uh, um, do the best we can. Is this for the right reasons, Joseph, or is there maybe a sense that they don't want to see too many international winners in the Melbourne Cup? <laughs> well, well, listen, you know, John, it is what it is, and and you know, you can kind of think about it and and talk about it and say whatever whatever reason they're after bringing the the all these rules in, but at the end of the day, this is what they've brought in, and if you want to go down there to compete, these are the hoops you have to jump through. So whether it's because there has been too many. Uh, 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 injuries, or because they, they don't want too many people coming down. There has been there has been a few injuries, so you can't deny that. So so you know the way we look at it is, it is what it is. Um, you know when in Rome, you have to you have to do what whatever they set for you to do, and that's that's just the way it is. And we try to deal with it the best we can. So we're talking about the race that stops the nation, Joseph, in Australia. We're hoping to see a good crowd at the Leperstown and the Curra. Uh, next weekend. I think it's important for people to support uh, the flat industry when we can actually r- remember now that we can go to these races. Yeah, absolutely. And like John, th- th- this weekend is going to have top two year olds in Europe, the top older horses in Europe. There'll be very competitive handicaps and really uh, the best jockeys and the best trainers. And, and, and like I said, the best horses uh, in, in the world nearly are going to be competing here. And you'll follow these horses, you know, from, from Champions Weekend. They'll be heading on to Australia. You'll see them in America. You'll see them in Hong Kong. You'll see them all over the world over the next few months after this weekend. So, And this is probably their, going to be their last runs in Ireland before they go on, uh, you know, a lot of the inter- in compete in a lot of the international races. So um, I'm really looking forward to the weekend fantastic competitive action and uh, it should be it should be fun it should be a great weekend you also jo- train jumps horses which is a very different discipline but if if there's one horse for us to maybe follow for the season uh, that's in your yard what would it be or maybe a horse that could turn up at Cheltenham in March yeah well I, I suppose an obvious one and you know what hopes what I hope is going to be our flag bearer this winter would be Fakir Dudaris. Uh he won very well in Aintree last year He's had a great summer's break. He's back in work. He looks brilliant, and uh, he's one that we're very excited about um, uh, uh, this season. And a little, maybe one that's not 
well, not so quiet, but but a novice is a horse called Eric Bloodaxe. I think we have him back in good shape, and he'll run the maiden her in the not too distant future. And he's another horse we're excited about. Eric Bloodaxe definitely won for the notebook. Are you going to go to the Breeders' Cup with anything, Joseph? Hopefully, uh, John. Yeah, we we have some two-year-olds and a couple of older horses who uh, will possibly end up uh, traveling there. Um, it's in Delmar this year, which is a beautiful place. Um, um, so yeah, that's something that w- hopefully is on our radar for for later in the season. Well, hopefully Twala Payment will do the business at the St. Ledger and maybe your dad might win his, I think, his 10th uh, uh, champion stakes uh, at Leverstown next Saturday with St. Mark's Basilica. But Joseph O'Brien, you're a gentleman uh, up Kilkenny and uh, we look forward to speaking to you again on Off the Ball Saturday very soon. Thanks a million, John. Keep well.